I have so we have a March meeting like session now. Uh, we have six speakers, uh, each 10 minutes, uh, and uh, the first will be Shuya from Boston College. Uh, thank you. So, uh, today I'm going to talk about the semantic and the Lakeshore's magic type constraint. So first, let's review the celebrated uh, HOLSM series. So it, it states that for a system with fractional feeling or fractional char uh, spin gradient cells, the one state must be uh, cannot be truly gapped and symmetric. So in this theorem, uh, we have assumed transition symmetry, but we can also replace it with other kind of spatial symmetry. And uh, all such type of generalizations are called LSM type constraints. So the question we want to address is the uh, following. So can we extract more information from LSM type constraints? Uh, let's look at a uh, uh, typical example. So for a system with spin half per unit cell, we know that if we want to realize the two deep series, then there must be gated excitations carrying the spin half. So the answer to our above question is yes. Uh, the LSM constraints indeed impose restrictions on realizable symmetric gate series. So, the hope of our, our work is that uh, given certain symmetric gate series, we can tell whether it can be realized uh, in the presence of a LSM type constraint. So, to that end, we need to first uh, describe the symmetric properties of a gate series. So, during our talk, we will focus on the deep class and dimensional usual abelian gate series with gate group GG and the symmetry group SG. Here, yeah, the gate charts and the gate flexes are both personic. So it's well known that the gate flux is uh, labeled by the gate group, and the gate chart is labeled by the one-dimensional representation of the gate group. And the symmetry properties of the gate chart is uh, uh, the well-known symmetry fractionalization. So we are, uh, by acting on gate, uh, symmetries on the uh, gate chart, we, we can pick up a phase which can be interpreted as a gradient with the gate flux. And the symmetry properties of the gate flux is more involved. Uh, we claim that it's described by this H to the distance. The d dimensional cohomology group of the symmetry group with coefficient in uh, H, H, H1, GG with coefficient in U1, which labels the gate chart. So, in order to motivate this, we first see that symmetry properties of the gate flux are given by background. Gate chart distributions. Therefore, we need, we need this uh, coefficient in the H1, which labels the gate chart. And next, let's see several examples uh, to further justify this statement. So the first example is in spatial dimension two. We choose gate group to be Z2. Uh, then the point, uh, then we have we have point excitations called Vison, and then the above formula simply tells the, the symmetry fractionization of Vison. And next, if we choose the uh, gate group to be U1, but still in two spatial dimensions, then the above formula is uh, this one, which is isomorphic to the uh, first cohomology group, which labels the symmetry quantum number of the two pi gate flux. But we can go to one higher dimension in three spatial dimension, and gate group three is still U1. Then, in this case, we have point excitations of, that are called monopoles. And uh, this uh, mathematical object is isomorphic to the H2, which describes the symmetry fragmentation of the monopole. And uh, uh, the above formula can be justified by the tensor network formulation. So now we have a symmetry descri uh, the description of symmetry properties of the gate theory. Uh, next is our uh, main shape. So we take the viewpoint of an only matching between the D plus one dimensional symmetric gauge series and uh, D plus two dimensional SPT phases, uh, where it means that uh, uh, it's described by this H, uh, D plus two cohomology group. So uh, our claim is that for a, a D plus one dimensional symmetric gauge series with gauge uh, charge described by this H two U and uh, flux described by this H D. V, then it can be realized as the surface of a D plus two dimensional SPT, if and only if this uh, bulk SPT phase uh, uh, class omega is equal to the cup product of U and V. 
and the cup product is formulated in this um, mathematical way. This can also be approved by Jensen L formulation or physical arguments based on the flux proliferation. And uh, the previous mentioned that LSM class, the anomaly class, is a subclass of the full bulk FPD anomaly. Let's consider a simple case where the symmetry group is the direct product of spatial symmetry and onset symmetry. Then we uh, claim that the LSM class is a subgroup of this mathematical object. So uh, we will see a simple example to uh, uh, understand it. So suppose we have only have inversion symmetry and the onset is also in symmetry. Then this above formula gives the data classification, which tells whether the inversion center has an integer spin or a half integer spin. And it, it can also be proved using test level. And uh, let's see two simple examples. First one is uh, a spin one system on square lines with C4 rotation and uh, SO3 spin rotation. And we consider the rotation center as a spin one. Then the gauge chart is classified by this uh, symmetry, let's say two symmetry parallelization, which means the E particle carries half integer spin or integer spin. And the gauge flux is, has this uh, J4 classification, which tells whether this uh, two pi gauge flux has having angular momentum 0, 1, 2, or 3 under the simple rotation. And the anomaly class is, uh, has this uh, J4, J2 uh, classification which tells whether C4 center has spin half integer or spin integer. And in our case it's integer spin, so this anomaly class is true. So and we have two series that are mapped to the uh, trivial anomaly class under the cup product. The the one is the E they, they both have E carrying spin half and uh, the Y series uh, the gauge flux carrying to by the flux carrying uh, angular momentum two. That's the well-known DQCP on square lines spin one. And uh, the other is a new type of uh, theory. Uh, here this uh, two by the flux carries zero <coughs> angular momentum. And if we pr proliferate with the monopoles, then we will have a featureless spin one state that's discussed before. So the point of this uh, uh, stated that here we can also consider condensing the E particle. But the E particle carries three half, so it will lead to some uh, spin ordered state. So here we have a, a we, we, we will find out the adjacent state, uh, adjacent order state to this future spin state. So we, we can have access to this spin one state by proliferating the skirmions in the ordered state. And our second, second example is the uh, Spin eyes on parabolic. Sorry, sorry. Okay. So, so the Lipschitz lattice phenomenon is the trivial element in that uh, in that in that D two. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Uh, and the non-trivial element of the D two is uh, it's a spin half system. It's a spin half. Okay. So in that case, the uh, uh, two package flux will carry angular momentum zero or uh, one or three. So that, that means if we proliferate it. So next, let's consider common spin eyes. So these are the spin half uh, system on the parabola lattice. And the uh, previous works have shown that there is a U1 gauge theory on this uh, system. And we only consider time reversal symmetry and uh, emotion symmetry for simplicity. So that's a, a graph of such a system. So in this case, the gauge charge. Uh, so we only consider one specific gauge theory, uh, which is re uh, relevant to the uh, re real physical systems. So in this gauge theory, the gauge charge E and multiple M are have specific transformation law on the symmetries. So in this case, E, e will change, uh, the gauge charge will be odd on the inversion and the time reversal symmetry. And we have this. Uh, they took class, they took classification of the fragmentation. It means whether inversion squared is equal to plus or minus one, or the time reversal times inversion together squared is equal, is equal to plus or minus one. And the gauge charge, 
So we have this uh, anomaly, which is a non-trivial element uh, in this calculation, which means that the inversion center has a spin half. And uh, on the cup product, we know there are two realizable B series uh, corresponding to the anomaly class. The one is the inversion squared equals to minus one on E particle, and the time reversal squared equals to minus one on M particle. That can be constructed using the usual shrink boson theory. And uh, in this case, the M particle is the shrink boson. And it's a Kramer's target. And the second one is uh, <coughs> the time reversal times inversion squared equals to minus one on both E and M particles. This is a gauge mean field theory that's realized in the uh, previous theoretical works. So the point of this uh, discussion is that from algebraic calculation, we know that these two states are different. And we know that uh, uh, the adjacent order states from the symmetry analysis. That's, that's very helpful in our research of such things. So, uh, with that, I would like to. Questions in the talk, so maybe we can move on to the next one and get them over time. Thanks, Charles.